Apple is about to turn Siri into an AI robot that can move, watch, and talk back. The boldest step they've ever taken in AI. At the same time, China has unleashed a robot that can pollinate crops on its own. Maybe the start of solving global food challenges. Johns Hopkins just proved an AI robot can perform surgery by itself, cutting into a gallbladder with the precision of a master surgeon. In California, AI robots are rebuilding homes after wildfires in record time. Beijing just hosted the world's first humanoid robot games, with machines racing, fighting, and collapsing on the field. And now HTC is stepping into the AI glasses war with a sleek pair that could rival Meta and Apple. There's a lot happening all at once in AI and robotics, so let's break it down. Apple is preparing its boldest step into AI yet, taking Siri out of the iPhone and bringing it to life as a robot that moves, watches, and talks back like a real assistant. For years, we've seen Siri as this static, kind of frustrating assistant stuck in your iPhone, but now Apple's plan is to literally bring it to life as robots, smart displays, and a whole new ecosystem. The most ambitious of these is a tabletop robot that could arrive in 2027. Think of a moving display that actually follows you around, swivels its head like a Pixar lamp, dances, and talks back with an animated version of Siri. Bloomberg reports Apple has been testing designs where Siri isn't just a voice, but a face. Whether that's the Finder icon bouncing around or even Memoji style avatars that react to you, the robot itself looks like a tablet mounted on a mechanical arm that can track your movement across a room, even lock on to you during FaceTime calls, which is one of its main functions. Apple already published research earlier this year showing a prototype dancing in sync with users, mimicking their gestures. And they aren't stopping there, they've apparently talked internally about Amazon Astro-style wheeled robots, and even loosely discussed humanoids, that's Apple, quietly planting seeds for something much bigger. The idea is to make Siri more than just a voice in your pocket. They're rebuilding it with an entirely new large language model, internally called LLM Siri, which could be out as early as next spring. It's not just the same old assistant. This one will run on generative AI, have natural conversations like ChatGPT's voice mode, and even handle multiple users at once by scanning faces with a built-in camera. Apple wants Siri to recognize who's in the room, personalize what's on screen, and even manage a household's smart devices with ease. Before the robot shows up though, Apple plans to launch a smart home display in 2026. Think of it like a Nest Hub, square display mounted on your counter, but running Apple's new OS built for shared use. You'll be able to play music, take notes, control your home, make video calls, and yes, it'll have the new look of Siri right there in the middle. This is also part of a larger ecosystem Apple is building, cameras, home security devices, and a lineup of products that connect through one system. Bloomberg even mentions a foldable iPhone, smart glasses, thinner iPhones, a hybrid iPad MacBook device, and even a 20th anniversary edition of the iPhone. So when people say Apple is behind on AI, this is their answer. They're not just making chatbots, they're making AI-powered robots and devices that integrate into daily life. And you can already see how seriously they're taking it. Craig Federighi, Apple's senior VP of software engineering, reportedly told his team during an internal meeting that this Siri revamp has put us in a position to deliver a much bigger upgrade than we envisioned. Investors seem to agree. Apple's stock jumped from about $202 at the start of August to over $230 midway through, with another 1.7% increase in a single day right after this report hit. The market clearly sees Apple's robotic AI strategy as a real growth driver. Now, while Apple is pushing toward making AI assistants feel more human, China just pulled off something equally groundbreaking, but in a completely different direction, agriculture. Scientists at the Institute of Genetics and Development Biology introduced GARE, the first AI-powered robot capable of performing hybrid pollination without human hands. Pollination is normally this slow, error-prone process of transferring pollen from one flower to another to create hybrid plants. With GARE, the robot autonomously navigates greenhouses, identifies target flowers, and uses a robotic arm to pollinate them with machine precision. 
This is huge. Cross-pollination is the foundation of creating hybrid crops that yield better harvests. Normally, it takes tons of time, labor, and still ends up with mistakes, but Gare speeds it up dramatically, slashes costs, and reduces errors. In testing, it worked consistently, and the team even engineered male sterile flowers through gene editing to make the process smoother. On top of that, they're combining it with advanced farming methods like de novo domestication and speed breeding. The result is what they're calling an intelligent robotic breeding factory one of the standout achievements here is a male sterile soybean system. Soybeans are critical in agriculture and being able to hybridize them more efficiently could lead to massive yield increases. Su Xiao, the project leader, describes Gare as a closed loop system where biotech, AI, and robotics work together. The study was even published in Cell, which is a big deal in the scientific world. China is clearly aiming to lead in this space, showing that robotics isn't just about flashy humanoids or personal assistants, it's about feeding the planet. Now, of course, this raises questions. The cost of deploying such systems is high, infrastructure is needed, and there are ethical debates around genetic modification and biodiversity. There's also the worry about labor displacement since many farmers rely on pollination jobs. Still, the potential upside is massive. If robots can reliably perform hybrid pollination at scale, you're looking at a pathway to solving some of the biggest agricultural challenges, maybe even contributing to solving global hunger in the long run. But real quick, if you've been following all this AI news and thinking, okay, this is cool, but what can I actually do with it? You're definitely not alone. That's why we created the AI Income Blueprint. It shows you seven ways regular people are using AI to build extra income streams on the side. No tech skills needed, and you can automate everything pretty easily. The guide contains simple, proven methods using tools I often talk about on this channel. Download it free by clicking the link in the description. Speaking of robots stepping into serious fields, Johns Hopkins University just showed how close we're getting to autonomous surgery. Their team created the Hierarchical Surgical Robot Transformer, or SRTH, which recently performed a complex phase of gallbladder removal fully autonomously on a lifelike patient model. This wasn't just a scripted set of moves. The system learned from watching videos of surgeons operating on pig cadavers. It uses a machine learning architecture similar to what powers ChatGPT. So instead of rigid steps, it adapts in real time, makes decisions on the fly, and corrects itself when unexpected variables show up like blood-like dyes or changes in anatomy. The performance was compared to skilled human surgeons and it handled a sequence of 17 tasks without mistakes. What's groundbreaking here is that it marks a shift from robots that only do tasks to robots that understand surgical procedures. Axel Krieger, one of the lead researchers, said this is a critical step toward clinical viability the SRTH can even respond to spoken commands and corrections from surgeons learning as it goes. Published in Science Robotics, this builds on a 2022 milestone when their earlier smart tissue autonomous robot performed surgery on a live animal. The end goal? Full surgeries carried out autonomously in the messy reality of operating rooms, not just controlled labs. Now let's move from the operating table to disaster recovery. In California, ABB Robotics and Cosmic Building set up what they call a mobile robotic micro factory in Pacific Palisades after wildfires destroyed over 16,000 structures earlier this year. It's basically a large tent housing an AIBB IRB 6710 robotic arm hooked into an AI-driven building information model platform with digital twin simulations, the system pre-plans each stage, then the robot assembles standardized wall panels, two by six inch lumber, plywood sheathing, prepping them for fast installation, two human workers feed materials and remove finished panels. But the heavy lifting is all automated. The numbers are impressive. Each panel takes about 20 minutes. A house frame can be completed in 10 days. Compare that to traditional construction and you're looking at a 70% reduction in build time and about 30% cut in costs. The designs also integrate fire resilient materials, solar panels with batteries, gray water recycling and even renewable water generation. They plan to build 100 homes by 2027 using this method. Now, the whole micro factory was assembled in just 30 days, proving it can be deployed fast in disaster zones 
This is robotics as a force for good, directly helping communities recover from devastating events. While we're talking about robots in the real world, China just hosted the first World Humanoid Robot Games in Beijing. Think Olympics, but for machines. Over 500 robots from 16 countries competed in events like running, soccer, kickboxing, and track. They also had niche tasks like medicine sorting and cleaning service challenges. The opening ceremony featured robots dancing and playing instruments alongside humans. Of course, it wasn't flawless. Robots stumbled, collided, and flopped over. In soccer, instead of smooth passes, they waddled into the ball and sometimes had to be dragged off the field after falling. Kickboxing matches looked more like awkward shoves than fluid strikes. Still, the spectacle is important. Unitree's H1 humanoid robot actually won gold in the 400 meter and 1500 meter races. To put it in perspective, the fastest humanoid robot finished the 1500 meters in six minutes and 34 seconds. That's almost double the human record of three minutes and 26 seconds. But it shows how far robotics has come. China is investing billions into robotics, both because of an aging population and competition with the United States. These games are partly a testbed for engineers to experiment with new approaches. As one German team member put it, it's better to fail here than invest millions into a commercial product that doesn't work. And finally, HTC is joining the AI glasses race. The Vive Eagle smart glasses just launched in Taiwan, weighing only 49 grams, about the same as Meta's Ray-Ban smart glasses. They pack built-in speakers, a 12 megapixel ultra-wide camera, Zeiss sun lenses, and an AI voice assistant. The assistant can translate text in real time across 13 languages, record reminders, suggest restaurants, and take notes. The glasses come in multiple frame colors, red, brown, gray, black, and cost around 520 US dollars. For now, they're limited to Taiwan, but if they expand globally, Meta and even Apple could have serious competition, with Apple rumored to be working on its own smart glasses. And Google and Samsung also in the mix, AI-powered eyewear is shaping up to be the next battleground in consumer tech. Look, most people still think AI is some distant future, but regular folks are already using it to build income streams quietly, behind the scenes. If you want to see how they're doing it without tech skills or quitting their job, download the AI Income Blueprint. It's totally free, the link's in the description, but it won't stay free forever. Though from Siri turning into a dancing robot, to pollination machines rewriting agriculture, to surgery robots, wildfire recovery, micro factories, global robot games, and AI glasses, this week shows how deeply robotics and AI are embedding into every corner of life. And it's only accelerating. That's it for today's breakdown. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.